Oh, there. Let's turn YouTubers a little bit. <laughs> All right, so hello everyone. This is Chris Assis and welcome to another Tango Movement Lab. And I wanted to take a couple moments to uh, say what we're going to be working on uh, for this session. So we're going to be exploring the uh, the front line of the body. And we've looked at that before. Uh, we've looked at it last week. Um, but we're going to, to fill up, to fill this whole space. So all around this whole big cavity that we have. Hello, hello, people are waving, I'm waving back. And um, the way that we're gonna do it is find this front line, again, through movement, and at the same time, find the line, the muscles that connect, and the ligaments that connect, and run through the front, the front part of our spine. And you can look it up on the web, or you can join us at bautans.com, so you can learn more details about that. So we, we have a whole, uh, a whole area, a whole space within this area, that um, this area of the body that we, there are a lot of imbalances, very different shapes uh, of our organs, how they sit, and how they move uh, around and along each other. So it's, it's very important to find the movement that is efficient and create shapes that can allow you to express yourselves, of course, without though jeopardizing your spine. So not going all the way to, to say, oh no, don't hold everything together, don't let anything move, but also don't wave over to the other end where you're uh, putting uh, your spine in at risk. So that's the idea. And uh, let's go and uh, I'm gonna go and introduce our first exercise for the day. I think this is okay. Yeah, all right. So let's go. Uh, let me see. How am I doing here? Yeah, sort of. I'm doing sort of okay. Let's see. So you can actually see there. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start. And you can have your hands um, on 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 artificial partner. Doesn't doesn't really matter. And I want you to find this um, this front line from the chest all the way down to the pelvis. And we've we've looked at this before. Going from one side to the other side. And link, we have looked at this as well, link the two legs along the front. Find this bridge. So what is happening? What is happening as you are shifting the weight? How does this front line respond? And also how are the two legs speaking to each other? And start freeing up this leg completely so you can swing it forward doesn't have to be something fancy swing it out to the side but notice how it feels to not hold instead realign and let's actually go ahead and do a little circle I'm just going to walk a little bit closer to you, just so you can see this part of the body mostly. I'm just doing circles with the front, uh, with the legs. Let me see. Yeah. yeah. So, there, I think this is a good uh, zoom in. So this part, I wanted you to take a closer look and see then if you can take your eyes away from the camera, away from the computer, and see if you can feel it for yourself. So if you're here, you're centered, your weight is split between the two feet. And notice how it feels to go from a two foot balance to one foot balance without feeling that you have to create unnecessary hold. 
like I'm doing here now, and then this becomes very restricted. Instead, allow for your body to realign, and then this becomes a lot more free. Okay, so try to find freedom, and you go here, you shift away, and you do a nice lapis, and you shift away, and you do a nice lapis, and or a little circle, whichever way you want to call it. Good. And I'm going to move away from you again. Take a moment to take a look at the camera again. Find that realignment. And now, like we had been exploring before, when you circle forward, your knees are going to come together and then one, the knees are going to start looking away from each other. That's how we walk. That's part of how we walk. So then the heel falls along the center line of the body. We're not going to go there just yet. But I want you to have this semicircle come in or quarter circle. And then you keep going. Have one hand on your hip. And one hand maybe like at your tor torso or uh, the diaphragm. And make these two speak to each other. Maybe a full circle. One more. Good, and switch sides. Don't forget about the transfer, tran transmission of weight. There we go, I found the right word. Good, as you relax, your knee will wanna come in towards the center line, then things start to change. And you will feel that the femur is moving within the hip, being very, very much aware of the, of the embrace of the hip joint. Do we go here? Maybe you want to spend some time doing this quarter circle if you like. And then go around so the toes are starting to change the orientation. And all the way back, reverse. Back. So we're not doing a full circle, maybe yet. And we're not staying square like this. Ways to know is there is more freedom in the free leg and you can breathe uh, with a, a, a certain flow. There's no restriction in the breath. Good, last one. There we go. Shift over. Spend some time in the shift. Don't uh, ignore it. And we're going to do the reverse. So I'm going to change over you can place one hand maybe on the diaphragm one hand on the hip as we go back we want to keep that feeling of an embrace of the femur inside the hip so let's see what kind of shape this creates this creates a shape where we have internal rotation and extension of the leg and you go around keeping that embrace and reverse okay. and reverse and your upper body will accommodate now that we sort of know what we're doing take your attention to the standing hip what's happening there you will notice that the further back we want to go after a little while you will need to flex that front hip a little bit so you can play with that, you can release the arms to help you out, Good. last one and switch over, good, mm -hmm. let me turn this way, feel that internal rotation, feel that the front hip is dedicated to the front leg that's rooting you in, it's not pushing away, it's 
allowing you to yield, to create roots. And the back, the other pelvic half is dedicated to the back leg and create a nice half circle, the reverse. If it helps you, you can keep the hands here. But maybe your mind is already Focus where it needs to focus, and so you can release the arms. Makes the balance a little bit easier as well. <laughs> Last one. Fantastic. So this is my suggestion for our first dance. You do a couple of lapis and then see how you can exit in the front step, exit in the back step, but feel how these, these relationships we just build, how they appear in your step, either going forward or going backwards. And then if you feel ready, you don't have to, you can add And notice how now these lines are beginning to twist a little bit more for going back. Oops, I forgot my lapis. Okay, that's okay. Right? So play with it. Spend a little bit of time there building those relationships with the music. And then, um, and then slowly add on. Okay. Soup, music. Where am I? There. <laughs> uh, mm. Give me a second. It always takes a little bit of extra time to connect for some reason. All right. Let's go. Let's go.
to the one and only, if you don't know him, Horacio Salgan. And I wanted, to, uh, I wanted us to spend some time listening to his music. He was uh, one great musician, and um, he was also um, in the... Um, he has also made a, a, great, um, a great path in tango, let's, let's say it that way. And it happens to be uh, the, the month of black history. So it is an opportunity to, how can I say, remember, though we have to remember these great musicians at any time, any given day, but it's an opportunity to pay uh, tribute and enjoy their wonderful music. So we're going to be playing a lot more of Horacio Salgan and others, um, other uh, uh, black musicians who have contributed to Argentinian tango. So, but before we do that, let's go back to our artificial partners and carry on with our exploration. So, let's settle facing our partner this time. And I'm going to use this side. So, I want you to find that extension and go as high up as you can. At some point, you're going to feel that there is a, an end, not a physical, not a muscular end, but an actual end. <laughs> you can't go any further, and because of the structure, and in order to go further, you would need to bend that front hip. You would need to create flexion in the front hip. So I want you to slowly find this extension and then slowly start lifting the leg. There is an end here. Instead of breaking the alignment of the spine, you will bend, you create flexion in the front hip. Go slowly, leg first, find this front line of the body, and now there is, find this other line along the front of your spine, running along the front of the spine from the top all the way to the bottom. Find support from there, start to lift, if you want to go deeper, flex the front hip, flex the front hip. So instead of holding without where it's not needed, or instead of breaking the support of your spine, you find movement elsewhere. Last one. <laughs> and change feet. Change over. And find the extension again front hip relating to the front leg front half back half relating to the back leg keep the extension there and see if you can get higher you're gonna feel an end if you want to go higher flex the front hip you can have one hand on the hip if that helps you out. Good release. Let's not overdo it. Extend, lift, flex, and down. Extend, lift, flex, and down. Finding that front line of the body, that bridge between the two legs, and then that support at the front of the spine. So it is internal. Okay, up, pull, and in. Let's do four more. Back, up, bend, and in. Last three. Up, bend, and in. Two, up, bend, and in. One, up, bend, and in. So, 
If you have an artificial partner, this is going to turn into a linear bolero. So you put our lapis exploration, you make your way to your uh, artificial partner. Maybe you do a nice bolero here. And, sorry, I forgot my lapis, it's okay. You do a lapis bolero. The idea is to see how all of these movements are very much related. So they're not um, something uh, con completely uh, completely uh, like different movements unrelated to each other. Okay. Uh, all right. Some strange, interesting. Okay, we'll have to deal with this. Okay. Anyways, annoying people on Facebook. That's fine. Okay. So here we go.
So it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to give you, oops, sorry. There. Okay, so let's, um, let's recap. And the, the idea is that I, I wanted to give you some tools so you can actually um, explore these, all these things uh, at, at a different, at different levels. So maybe you want to only stay with the, um, uh, with a lapis, or maybe you want to take it into the forward or the back steps, or um, you might want uh, to have, uh, to explore those uh, boleos uh, linear. We're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be doing them in the pivot as well very soon. Um, now, all, the other thing I wanted us to explore, and we'll have one last song to do that, is to see how we can possibly put that to the music. This is a, another, another level, but it relates to, it all comes together in a way. So, just now, just dance for our last dance. Just dance with these ideas in mind. See if here and there you can add a boleo if you can. Um, see if you can accentuate that movement. Or if you don't want a boleo, maybe it's a a, a bigger lapis, for example. That can also be uh, that can also be an option. You probably notice that this music sounds a lot like uh, Pugliese and you're not you're not wrong um, because there was a lot of give and take between the two of them so um, hopefully I'll, I'll be putting the playlist together and sending it out to you if you're interested and uh, we're going to continue with this um, acknowledging the contribution of uh, black music musicians and dancers so check check out those um, updates for that uh, for the Argentine tango history. So let's do one last song. See where how you can play with all of these stuff. <laughs> Thank you. 
Pass. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Send me your questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, um, and we'll be back with more music and rhythm um, on Saturday, 12 to 1 p.m. It is a workshop. You can find it on... Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. You can find it on our Facebook page, um, and it will be for all levels. Uh, it is part of the mindfulness series. So we're going to start with understanding the rhythms we already already embody, the rhythms that make us us, meaning humans. And then we'll have wonderful, wonderful tango music as well. So if you can, I hope you'll be able to join us. You can find all the information on Facebook about Dance Constructing Dance Music and Rhythm Workshop. And if you can't make it, that's okay. <laughs> I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye. <laughs>